Welcome to I Still Believe. We're excited to have you here. Today on I Still Believe with Pastor Sherry Dameron. You keep pointing me to my stench that I'm trying to hide. But if I search deeper in Him, I will begin to see His Son. And I can become what I see. But if I can't see nothing but my leprosy, it's going to kill me and it's going to keep me in prison. But if I ever see Him high and lifted up, He will deliver me. There is power in your words to turn your negative situation around. And as a thank you for your gift of any amount over $20, we will send you Pastor Sherry's latest sermon series, On Purpose, and also a 2017 Sherry Dameron Ministries wall calendar, including never-before-seen images of Pastor Sherry and her family. To receive these free gifts, please call us at 912-245-9156 and tell the person on the other end of the line that you want the January 17 package. Thanks for tuning in today, and may God richly bless you. It was the Sadducees and it was the Pharisees that loved the high positions. It was the Sadducees and the Pharisees that hid behind the armor of their religion, that hid behind the temple. But they were oozing with disease, with judgment, judgmental spirits, with hate and with anger and with disdain for Christ himself. For Christ himself. Hiding and using religion as my armor and hating the man who came to set me free. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Here's the reason I said that. Because I want you to be careful of what you hide to maintain your position. Because that is the very thing that is imprisoning you today. You are imprisoned by the thing that you choose to hold on to because if we could just let it go let it go let it go if we could just let it go we could be free I want to ask you a question what's worse your leprosy or the stress of hiding it what's worse uh, yeah that's what I'm saying and the Syrians Verse 2, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and they had taken captive one of the land of Israel. It was a little maid and she waited. In other words, she served Naaman's wife. Hmm. Naaman, a mighty man of valor. And he dare not take his armor off in front of his army. He dare not take his armor off in front of the king or the people who admired him and who adored him. But he didn't mind taking his armor off in front of the little maid girl. Because after all, he was imprisoned himself. And she was nothing but just a little prisoner. And prisoners seem to relate to prisoners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be careful when you take off your armor at who you choose to take it off in front of. Because sometimes we take off our armor and we air our faults to one who has the same faults that we have because we don't want to be better, we just want to be petted. Ow. I want us to be better. I don't want you just to hear my story. I want you to help me be whole. Because I feel better when you hear my story because we can swap stories because you have a story just as bad as mine. But let me take off my armor in front of somebody who can show me the way to get myself delivered so I can be free and free indeed. So I don't have to put back on this armor anymore. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Jesus, we don't mind what other people see. We're very careful when we come to church 
because we don't want them to see. We get all armored up. We get all fixed up. But I really do wonder if we went home with some of us, and I say us, when we got behind closed doors, I wonder what we would really see. And when we get behind closed doors, I wonder what we would see. Y'all waiting on me to sing song. Watch this. Does your resume hold its validity behind closed doors? Does it hold its validity behind closed doors? Naaman had conquered Syria's army, which was uh, uh, conquered Syria's, I'm sorry, Syria's enemy, which was Israel. Israel was Syria's enemy, and Naaman had conquered Israel. And during his conquest, what he had done is he had taken him a little captive girl. Because when you're a prisoner inside your own armor, you have to imprison others. Because after all, prisoners only relate to prisoners. I can look at who you hang out with and who you relate to, and I can tell what you got inside your armor. Yeah. yeah. Put me on your Facebook page for just a second. I can tell you what you got in your armor. Mm -hmm. Naaman saw the little girl, the little Israelite girl, as having no value. He took her against her own will. He saw her as having no value but to serve his needs, his secret needs. But little did he know that this little girl that he counted out and said had no value held the answer to his needs. Uh-huh. Be careful how you count people out because they don't shine like you shine. They might not shine like you shine, but they might have the answer to your problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder this. I wonder could the person that you have counted out be the answer to your but? Better yet, did somebody count you out? And because they counted you out, now you have imprisoned yourself by the words that they used against you. And now the gift that God placed in you, you will no longer allow to operate because they counted you out. So you didn't put on an armor. You just built walls. Mm -hmm. Y'all good? She may have been in captivity, this little slave girl, but God still had a purpose for that little girl. Even in her captivity, we're going to talk about her resume just a little bit. Little did Naaman know that in spite of society's view of who you are, when God calls you blessed, can't nobody curse you. When God calls you free, can't nobody put you in prison. When God said you got it, can't nobody take it. Unless you let them. You give others the key to your prison door. Jesus Christ took the key and gave it to you. It's up to you as to what you do with that key. You hear me? All right. Because God will hide your answers in the most unusual places. And she said to her mistress, this little girl, we're about to talk about her resume. This little slave girl who was counted out. She wasn't just a slave girl. The Bible said she was a little Slave girl. Can I tell you little as much when God's in it? Don't discount the little people. Because the little people might be the ones that's got your answer. And she said to her mistress, I would to God that my Lord was with the prophet that is in Samaria because he could recover him of his leprosy. Naaman snatched this little girl against her will and her heart 
he could not touch because she still said you hold me in captivity but I went to God you could go back to the country that you conquered because the country that you conquered has the answer for what you hold and hide inside of you my heart is to see you free although your heart is to put me in bondage mm -hmm. yeah the thing is just a second. I'm searching. I'm looking for an answer, Brother John. But guess what? I've searched high and I've searched low. But the answer that you search for is in your house. You've looked behind this and you've looked behind that and you've bought this and you've bought that and you've went to this doctor and you've went to that psychiatrist and you've taken those pills and you've married this one and you've divorced that one and you've searched and you've searched and you've searched and the answer that you desire is right in front of you. The answer that you need is even within you if you just let him out. Jesus. He can cause your search. He can narrow your search. If you'll just let him. What do you do when the cure to your crisis is in your house? But because it's in a package different than what you look for, you're missing it. Missing it. Because I wasn't expecting the answer to be in the little girl that I took captivity. Coming from the country that I conquered. To be sure, it can't be in her. She's a little thing. I own her. The one who owns you, the thing that owns you, God said, I got the answer for you. I got the answer for you. I'm just going to show you something. Mm, help me, Lord. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I really, that's why I'm really trying to stay because I want you to hear what he says, okay? If we would begin to search deeper instead of further, deeper yea even the deep things of God I'm not talking about searching deeper in me because there's where my root lies there's where my problem is I'm talking about searching deeper in him because you keep pointing me to me you keep pointing me to my stench that I'm trying to hide but if I search deeper in him I will begin to see his son and I can become what I see but if I can't see nothing but my leprosy it's going to kill me and it's going to keep me in prison but if I ever see him high and lifted up he will deliver me because you can't hold me captive once he has set me free Hmm. Jesus have mercy. We all preach about naming and he preaches good. And I could get right into the end of this and I could preach the fire out of this thing. We have church in a few minutes. But I'm interested in this little slave girl. I probably wouldn't be so interested in the little slave girl if I didn't know what it was like to be a little slave girl. But because I can identify with her, I'm, I'm very interested in the little maiden. In other words, I'm more interested in the maiden than the mighty. We like the mighty. But need I remind you, the mighty is covered up in armor. The maiden is uncovered by truth. Uh-huh. Watch this. Naaman was free. He was free. Yet he was imprisoned. The little maiden was bound. Yet she was free. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Is that, is that not going to help anybody? I'm helping myself. I'm about to preach myself happy in Jesus' name. Naaman took this little girl captive and he made her a slave. What he did was he, literally, he snatched her from her mama and he snatched her from her daddy. He snatched her from her country. He counted her good for nothing. Good for nothing but to serve his needs. But to serve his wife. To clean his house. And to clean his his oozing sores. You are watching I Still Believe with Pastor Sherry Dameron. We will return after this brief message. 
There is power in your words to turn your negative situation around. And as a thank you for your gift of any amount over $20, we will send you Pastor Sherry's latest sermon series on purpose and also a 2017 Sherry Dameron Ministries wall calendar including never before seen images of Pastor Sherry and her family. To receive these free gifts, please call us at 912-245-9156 and tell the person on the other end of the line that you want the January 17 package. Thanks for tuning in today and may God richly bless you. Of disease, he thought that he had taken her dignity but you can't take my dignity. He thought he had taken her character, but you can't capture my character. I'm about to show y'all something, all right? Nobody can make you a slave but you. But you. You're the only one that holds that right, all right? The only one. We've forgotten that the one with the most power in this story was the little maiden girl. She doesn't even have a name, y'all. They didn't even give her a name, but she had more power than the mighty man of valor. She had a butt. She had a butt. But her butt was stronger than Naaman's butt. And I'm going to show you why. He took her out of her surroundings and he took her out of her comfort zone and he took her away from her people. He took her out of her country. But he couldn't take the truth of God out of her. He could not take her God out of her. Okay? But Naaman was a leper. But the little slave girl knew God. Her butt was stronger than his butt. Because it's not about your accomplishments. Because Naaman was who he was because of his accomplishments. It's not about your accomplishments. Because those accomplishments can go south quickly. It's about who you know. It's about who you know. You can take away his accomplishments, but you can't take away who she knows. No matter where you put her, she still knows him. Okay? The truth of the matter is this. The little maid had more power than her captor because although he held her captive she held the answer to what held him watch this God is reading your resume and what he wants to see is how do you handle your captors how do you handle those who try to imprison you let me put it this way how do you handle your enemies that's what he's looking at. That's what he's waiting to see. In other words, they snatched her against her will. But it wasn't against God's will. Uh-oh. Where are we going? We're about to go somewhere. They snatched her against her will. But it wasn't against God's will. Because she was held captive for a higher purpose. He was held captive with no purpose. But she was held captive for a higher purpose. She was about to serve the purpose of God. I'm about to show you why. All right. Let me say this. It doesn't matter who or what is holding you. Because it cannot hold you. If you let God hold your purpose. In his hand. You can hold me. But you can't touch my purpose. How, why, how can you say that? You don't know. Here you are. You're, you're, you're preaching nationwide. 128 churches in Pakistan. You've written a book. You have, you've got all these CDs. You've got, you, we've got calls coming in from all over. You've got all this stuff going on. You know, what do you, how do you know what you're talking about, Pastor? Let me tell you something. I was held captive for eight years that they told me I couldn't speak. You can't sing. You can't play the piano. You, you, you certainly can't, can't get up here and preach. You sit right there on that little pew, little captive girl, because you know what you, you know what you did. You know what you did. You know what you just came out of. You sit right there, and I did. I kept my mouth shut, and I didn't say a word because they told me that I couldn't. I was held captive. But one day, I made a choice. Instead of hating my captors, 
I began to pray for and love and honor and serve my captors. And my mama knows I did it. I began to serve those who held me captive. I began to serve the churches that told me that I was not worthy to speak. And when I began to serve the churches, and when I began to serve the pastors that told me I was not worthy to even open my mouth, when I began, they couldn't hold me anymore, because when I began to serve them, God began to bring back my purpose. God began to serve me when I began to serve them. It happened. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. What do you do when he orders your steps and they're going down and not up? Ooh, that was bad. I knew I wouldn't get any amens there. Good Lord, what do you do? Lord, order my steps. I just want to do your will. God, I want to serve you. What do you do when your steps are going down? But you're trying to go up. It's just what I'm trying to say. I need to say this, all right? The slave girl was from Israel. And she had every, here's her resume. She had every right to be bitter. Every right to be bitter. She had every right to hate this man. She had every right to let him rot in his own flesh. She had every right. I don't blame her. She had every right. She had every right to despise and to keep her mouth shut and not say a word. In other words, she had the power to give him life, but the right to let him die. There's her resume. She had the power to give him life. She knew who could heal him. But she had the right to let him die. But the real test of power is what you do with your rights. Hmm. That's what I said. Jesus. That's exactly. Can I say I could not preach this as I am preaching it had I not just walked it. She held the ultimate decision. Can I tell you of which we all hold. We all have this decision to make. Which is this. Will I help the one who holds me captive? Will I forgive the one who holds me captive and not just forgive them for what they did 20 years ago or two seconds ago? But when I see an opportunity, can I help them? Can I lead them? Can I tell them about Christ? Can I be Christ to them? Will I take them a Christmas gift? Something besides stabbing them in the back? Ooh. Because watch this. You are no more deserving of the blessing that you seek than the blessing that you withhold from the one you hate. Jesus, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. What I'm doing is I'm using the word of God to set you free. Not to hold you in captivity, but to set you free. Okay, because we're going to get free before the end of it. I'm going to add a little twist right here. Sometimes it's not another who holds you captive, but sometimes it's the power that you withhold from the ones that you hate that hold you captive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we got to be free, all right? Being mighty begins with being merciful. Being mighty begins with being merciful. Okay. So the little maiden here, a little girl from Israel, she said, I, I know this prophet in Israel and, and my heart's desire is that, is that he could heal Naaman. He would heal my Lord. And somebody heard the little maiden talking and this is what happened. Somebody went in and told the king what the little maiden had said that from the land of, of, of Israel that Naaman, uh, what he, she had said to Naaman's wife. And the king of Syria said, watch this. Hmm. I'm going to send a letter to the king of Israel. The little girl said, I know a prophet in Israel. But the king said, I'm going to send a king. I'm going to send a letter to the king of Israel. And then he departed. He sent it with this dude and he departed. And he took 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment.
because this is, helps me, my armor look good when I bring all this to the king. I'm not going to the prophet, but I'll go to the king and show him what I got. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. And he said, when you take this letter, when you go, I want, I want, uh, Naaman, I want you to go with this letter. And, and I want you to, uh, king, I want you to heal my servant of his leprosy. Uh-huh. The maiden didn't tell him. She never told them to go to the king. She didn't say the king could do anything. She never said that. She said there's a prophet in Israel. But Naaman wanted to go up when God was trying to bring Naaman down. Uh-huh. And it came to pass. It's always going to come to pass. And it came to pass. When the king of Israel read the letter, he rent his clothes. And he said, am I God? to kill or to make alive, that this man is sending me to heal Naaman of his leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeks to quarrel against me. In other words, the king of Israel saw the letter, and he said, they always trying to pick a fight. And here they are again, asking something of me that I cannot deliver. You keep asking something of someone that they cannot deliver and quit blaming them. God never told you they held your answer to start with. What? Has the message touched you today? Has it spoken something to your spirit? Have you gained direction? Can I tell you the word of God will change you? I want to pray with you today as we leave our time together but i want to ask you a question do you know jesus christ is your lord and your savior because if not it's the most important decision you will ever make pray with me father in the name of jesus i thank you and i bless you i thank you that you sent your son to die for my sins that you sent your son to redeem me from myself i receive you as my lord and as my savior I thank you that your blood washes me clean and makes me whole and makes me yet again a whole new vessel. I believe that you are Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that you went into the grave and that you rose again on the third day and that you are returning for me. I thank you. I receive you today in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, it's just that easy. Your life has been radically changed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Give us a call, write us a letter, go to our website. We want to help you along your journey. Let us know that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. As we leave our time together, I want to bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, I pray a blessing over your people. I pray God that you would cause your face to shine upon them, that you would use them in any way that you would see fit, God. I ask you Lord that you would join us together by our heart and by our spirit, Father. I ask you Lord that you would direct their path, cause the word of God to be a light unto their feet and a lamp unto their pathway, God. And until we meet again, I bless you, I thank you, and I honor you in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. I thank you. And I bless you. Thank you for this time. And I'll see you soon. Be blessed.